Good morning, it's Uncle Lou here. Uh, yep, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, live for you on YouTube today. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, up today, where do the Georgia Bulldogs go from here? It's a legitimate question uh, for a variety of reasons. Now, obviously, Georgia's not the first team to lose a national title game. Duh. Uh, there's a loser every single year. Um, Georgia lost in a devastating way, though. Uh, where, where do we go from here? Can Georgia rebound? Uh, Talent-wise, what are we going to look like next year? Um, from a mental standpoint, standpoint, can Georgia get over this loss and avoid... Uh, you know, a, a hangover or, or a letdown that drags into next season. Uh, you know, a, a poor pitiful me routine, you know, uh, type of thing where they let this loss uh, cause additional losses next year because they just can't get it off their mind. Those are things worth talking about and discussing, and we're going to do that on this video here today. But before I get into that, I want to mention this real quick. I never, I don't really ever mention this. I think maybe once or twice I've mentioned it. But you may have noticed in the description of the Uncle Lou videos and almost all the videos uh, that I've done over the last couple of months, there's been a link uh, to a to a supplement. Oh, it, this one right here. There it is. Yeah, doo -doo -doo. yeah, a miracle in a bottle uh, is what it says. Anyway, uh, I don't ever uh, mention it because I'm, I'm not a, a pitch man or whatever, anything like that. But those good people over at New NEU uh, are good enough to support the Uncle Lou channel. Uh, it, it's a it's an energy supplement, basically, is, is what it is—a nutritional supplement, a workout supplement. Now, of course, Uncle Lou doesn't work out. Um, I'm just naturally blessed uh, with this body of a Greek god here. Uh, and now I know not everybody uh, is lucky in, in that way, and a lot of you have to spend a lot of time working out and stuff like that. This is great for that. I take it for the energy. Uh, you guys know I, I love my coffee. I was drinking way too much coffee. I'm embarrassed to even say uh, really how much coffee I was drinking in a, in a day. Some Four and five cups of coffee some some days. Now, I, I still uh, have my cup of coffee in the morning, but no more than one, sometimes two a day. And this stuff is great. Uh, there's no crash or letdown halfway through the day. Anyway, if you click the link in the description of you know, any of these videos, you can get you a free sample of that stuff, and it will help support the Uncle Lou channel, and it'll help support yourself. Stuff's good for you. It's all natural, no side effects, none of that type of crap. Anyway, uh, on to the video. I wanted to mention that because the link's been down there for a while and I never really explained what it was. Uh, so there you go. Uh, can Georgia rebound from this devastating loss to, uh, Alabama? Well, yeah. Uh, how do I know that? Uh, here's a pretty interesting fact for you uh, and something that I think Georgia fans, uh, can hold on to here. The last two winners of the national title game lost the national title game the year before, right? Who won it this year? Alabama. Well, they lost it last year. Who won it last year? Clemson. Clemson lost it the year before that. So you hear this a lot, and this, is, this has been true a whole lot in the NFL. It's very hard. Usually a team that loses the Super Bowl has a bad year the next year. But it hasn't seemed to translate down to the college level, especially uh, recently, lately, right? Uh, in, the, in the case of the last two losers, they've went on the following year to win the game. So, hey, uh, of course Georgia can get back next year. Now, talent-wise, where is Georgia at? Let's just be realistic here. You're not replacing Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle. Not happening. Um, do I think Georgia is ever going to be hurting at the running back position? No, I don't. Um, but the odds of replacing those two uh, in terms of stats and production is... <laughs> very low leadership you're not replacing that at all you're talking about two guys who could have gone to the nfl after last year came back so seniors uh t you know two leaders two kids that did everything the right way stayed out of trouble where they were when they were at uga and you can't discount that from a leadership uh standpoint everybody on the team looked up to those two so we're gonna miss those two i love swift um, you know, I think Herring and Holyfield are, uh, are, are more than serviceable as backup running backs. I love Swift. We got Zeus coming in, the number one uh, running back prospect in America. And James Cook, the number three or the number four, depending on which list you look at, running back prospect in America. And yeah, they'll be freshmen. But honestly, running back is probably the easiest position to, tra to, to transition to from high school to college. 
right? Very few running backs redshirt nowadays, um, especially your good one. I mean, if you're ranked any, if you're a top 10, 15, or 20 running back coming out of high school, you're playing as a freshman in college, right? Not that hard to take a handoff and run or a pitch and run. Now, there are some things that take some time to pick up, understanding adjustments at the line, uh, blocking schemes, uh, it, pick, uh, blitz pickups. I, I get all that. But in terms of just running the ball, you know, George is going to be okay at the running back position. I I wouldn't consider it a weakness uh, by any stretch of the imagination. George is going to be strong at the running back position, even though I do acknowledge it's going to be almost impossible to replace what we got from Chubb and Michelle this year and really over the course of the last uh, three or four years. But I do not think we'll be hurting at the running back position. Staying with offense, you look at quarterback. Jake Fromm was a true freshman this year, only going to get better over the next three years. Uh, I'm pretty much stating the obvious here. Next year, will, barring injury to Jake Fromm, next year will be the first year since, what, 2014 that Georgia has had a, a, a returning starter at quarterback, right? Fromm this year, first-year starter. Eason last year, first-year starter. Mason the year before that, first-year starter. Uh, you see where I'm sort of, uh, oh, I left Lambert out. How could I forget Grayson Lambert? Yeah, so it was, you know, four years in a row, we've had a one-year starter. Hudson Mason, Grayson Lambert, Jacob Eason, and this year, Jake Fromm. You got to go all the way back to Aaron Murray to find a quarterback at UJ who, who started for more than one season. That's a benefit. Um, even though we're losing Chubb and Michelle, I think our offense has the potential to be even better next year than what we saw this year. Uh, we improved from 24 points a game two seasons ago to almost 35 points a game this year, and I don't see any reason why that doesn't go a little bit higher next year, even without Chubb and Michelle. I think we'll have a better passing game than what we saw this year. Uh, speaking of passing game, let's look at the receivers. We're going to lose Javon Wims. He was definitely our playmaker this year. Um, I'm not convinced, though, that he was the playmaker this year because – he was far and away more talented than the other receivers. I'm not convinced of that. I think Fromm was comfortable with Wims for whatever reason. I've heard stories and read articles that him and Wims worked out a lot pretty much from the time Fromm stepped on campus uh, last January through the entire offseason. And, of course, we saw the fruits of that on the field this year. Wims tended to be the one that Fromm looked to first more times than not. Uh, and Wims came up with some amazing plays this year for UGA. Uh, he was a great receiver. I'm not knocking him. It's just that I think Godwin, Ridley, and some of our younger guys that didn't play this year are going to be more than capable of stepping in next year to take uh, to take what we lost with Wims. Uh, and I think we'll be fine and probably better at the wide receiver position than what we saw this year. Landers, I'm real high on that guy. He's really, really tall, which is something I've wanted at UJ for a long time. One of these huge, tall receivers. We sort of had that with Wims, 6'3", 6'4". Landers a little bit taller than that. Uh, J.J. Holloman, Jeremiah Holloman, uh, he didn't play much this year. True freshman wide receiver. I saw him in the spring game. Was really impressed with what I saw. Yes, I know it's a spring game, but that's all he, That's all you got to judge him on so far, and he looked really, really good. I expect him and Landers both to get some some looks next year along with uh, uh, Godwin and, of course, Riley Ridley, who had the game of his life uh, in the national championship game. Wims went down. Riley stepped up big time, uh, had some huge catches. And, of course, uh, the, the burner, Mecole Hardman. It seems like we've got one of these guys every year, right? Isaiah McKenzie, we lose him, bring uh, McCole Hardman in. Haven't really missed a beat there. Uh, now, while he's not a legitimate, uh, true wide receiver one or really even wide receiver two, He's a very, very dangerous uh, playmaker with the ball in his hands. Excellent slot receiver, uh, a threat on, on, on end arounds and jet sweeps and things like that. Deadly on, uh, on bubble screens, hitch passes, and quick slant routes, not to mention what he gives you in the return game. Uh, so I think uh, wide receiver-wise will be better than what we were this season. Then you look at the offensive line. <laughs> We're loaded with freshman and sophomore stud offensive linemen. The offensive line at UJ is fixing to go from our weakest link to probably our biggest strength in the course of one season. I wasn't even that impressed, to be honest with you, with our offensive line this year. I thought, now, given the talent level that our offensive line had this year, I thought they played really, really well. Okay, I thought they played really, really well. Uh, I, I think they exceeded expectations but they're very very young and they were very very small still 
Uh, we're losing, of course, Isaiah Wynn, who played left tackle for us this year, did a really good job. He's not even really a tackle. He's a guard. He doesn't have the size to be a tackle. Uh, he'll, he'll get drafted in the NFL. Not, not at tackle, though. Uh, Isaiah Wynn will be a guard um, at the next level. He's too short. Um, doesn't weigh enough uh, to, to play tackle. Should have been playing guard at UGA, but we didn't have anybody to play tackle, so he was forced to play there, did very, very well. And then uh, Lamont Guyard uh, is really a guard. He played center this year. We, it was a mismatch line this year, but I thought they did really, really good. But you look at the ones we have coming back, Andrew Thomas, Ben Cleveland. You got Isaiah Wilson, who was the number one offensive tackle a couple of years ago that'll be playing. We've got some stud freshman offensive linemen coming in this year. Now, if I said that running back is probably the easiest position to, trans to transition to from high school to college, I'm going to say the opposite about offensive line, particularly tackle. Tackle, very, very hard to play at the college level because you tend to be going up against elite defensive ends, especially in the SEC. Big, fast, strong uh, guys you're going up against week in and week out in the SEC. Hard for freshmen to make that transition. We'll see if any of these big boys can come in and do it right away. If not, I'm confident that our sophomores and juniors uh, are more than capable of uh, leading Georgia's offensive line next year, and we're going to see a huge improvement in Georgia's offensive line over the next two, three, four years uh, moving into the future. So overall, the offense is going to be, I think, better than what we saw this year, even though, yes, we're losing uh, the most prolific running back duo in the history of college football with Sony, Sony Michelle and Nick uh, Chubb. Defensive side of the ball, Roquan Smith, my guess is he's gone. The guy's are almost a guaranteed top 10 pick. He's that good. Um, you know, depending on where the draft order falls and what trades are made, and th it's, it's hard to it's hard to peg a guy down on a certain uh, certain position until you know the exact draft order and what trades may or may not happen on draft day. But the guy it has top ten talent. I'd be shocked if he came back to UGA. Um, I think he's gone. I think DeAndre Baker will come back though. Cornerback, probably our best cover corner this year. I think he'll come back. Uh, we're keeping a couple of junior defensive linemen too. Uh, Trent Thompson uh, and Ledbetter will be back. Losing, of course, uh, John Atkins, which was a solid as a rock uh, for the last couple of years at nose tackle for UJ. We will miss him, but we've got plenty of beef on the defensive line to replace that. Uh, linebacker will be an issue at UJ uh, next year if we lose uh, Roquan, which I think we will because we're losing, of course, uh, Lorenzo Carter as well. Uh, so there's going to have to be some young guys step up on linebacker next year. But as long as Kirby and Mel Tucker are leading our defense, I have 100% faith and confidence that they're going to be able to put a, uh, a, a top 10 to 15 defense on the field every single year. And every once in a while, I think we'll see a year like we saw this year where we have a top five defense. Can we repeat as top five defense next year? That remains to be seen. I think we have the talent on the team to do it, but some of it is young and inexperienced. So we'll have to see. Uh, how quickly they pick things up heading through the first couple of weeks of the season next year. Um, special teams, huge improvement in special teams this year. I expect that to continue next year. So no real question marks for Uncle Lou there. Um, so I think Georgia does have what it takes to rebound from this national title loss. Will they get back to the national title game next year? Way too early to tell that right now. Uh, we got plenty of time this summer. I'll do all my preview and prediction videos when it gets, you know, real close to the season or whatever. I'm not going to try to get into right now trying to guess who's winning what conferences and who's making the playoffs and all that right now. Just way too early for all that. But I definitely think Georgia not going anywhere uh, for the foreseeable future. I expect them to be favored to win the East again. Um, I, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be uh, and have the potential, uh, the coaching, the talent, the athletes, and the schedule to have another really, really good uh, year. Well, that's about it. Uh, to summarize, can Georgia get past this loss? Yeah, they can. Um, we'll have to see how it affects them mentally, uh, but I think Kirby will do what he needs to do and the rest of the staff to help those guys get over that loss um, and start preparing for next year. Fully expect them to do that. Uh, anyway, that's it for today. Appreciate y'all watching. Have a great day and an even better morning, too.